a nail-biting finish in this one, but the Blue Jays can't quite crawl back into it as they lose 9-8 to the Cleveland Indians. This game was full of offense. You look at the game yesterday against Carlos Carrasco, you thought, well, it's going to be very minimal uh, amount of hits for the Blue Jays, and it was. But today, with Pluko on the mound for the um, for the Cleveland Indians, and with Sean Reed Foley on the mound for the Blue Jays, we didn't really know what we were going to see. We we saw in Sean Reed Foley's last last outing, he was terrific against the Miami Marlins. But you're not facing Miami; you are facing Cleveland. The Cleveland Indians are a very good offensive ball club, so it was going to be a really big test for the young right-handed pitcher. And he started out really good. First off, he gets through the first two innings, and what that does, it gives the Blue Jays an opportunity to strike first, as in the bottom of the second, Kevin Pillar leads off the inning with a double. Then Danny Jensen strikes out, but then next up, Richard Urania. He doubles to right field, Kevin Pillar comes in to score. Next batter, Aledmus Diaz. He singles to left field, Urania comes in to score, the Jays are up 2-0. Exactly what you want to see to start off the ball game. But... You know, uh, Sean Reed Foley gives up a run there in the top half of the third. As we've said, the Jays score runs. And then they give up one on a Greg Allen RBI double to center field. Roberto Perez comes in to score, and it's a 2-1 game. That's okay. It's only 2-1. You still have the lead. We go to the bottom of the third inning, and Randall Gritchick, guys, gets a 1-2 pitch on the upper outer half. It was a fastball, and he takes it the other way. And it just barely clears the yard, but it does. And the Jays add that one run right back. It is 3-1 Blue Jays. But let's now go to the top of the fifth inning, where things just implode for Sean Reed Foley. He was great through the first four innings. He was very good, working out of some tough situations at times, but overall looking pretty solid. First batter of the fifth inning, Roberto Perez, he hits a shot. To center field, and it's a 3-2 game. Next batter, Allen. He walks. Then Lindor flies out. And you're like, okay, well, it's all right. It's still, you, know, you still got the one-run lead. One out, a guy at first for Michael Brantley. And then Brantley hits a two-run shot, making it 4-3. to three. And then Jose Ramirez flies out. And then you're like, okay, well, now there's two out, nobody on. You're stuck one. Oh, well, get right, let's get right back into this. Then Encarnacion walks. Then Yonder Alonso walks. And uh, right at that point, Sean Reed Foley gets the boot as he's pulled from the ball game for Justin Schaefer. And man, he doesn't do much better. He can't throw strikes. Melky Cabrera walks on four pitches to load the bases. Jason Kipnis walks on four pitches to score a run. And then Roberto Perez comes up and crushes a ball to center field. Kevin Pillar, I thought he would have a play on that ball. Alas, he did not obviously make the play. Clears the bases. And that 3-1 lead at the beginning of the inning turns into an 8-3 deficit. Put into perspective, guys, what would have happened if Justin Schaefer actually threw strikes in his inning and got, who was at the first batting? Uh, Melky Cabrera. If he got Melky out in that inning, it's a 4-3 game and the, lead, the Jays are still there. But instead he can't find the zone and when he does, he gets rocked. And the Jays are down 8-3, like I said. But the next half inning, the Blue Jays start to crawl back into it. Randall Gritchick hits a shot. His 21st home run to left field. Two home runs in the ball game for Gritch. And the Jays make it 8-4. Next batter, Rowdy Telez. I think, I think it was uh, back-to-back, wasn't it? No. Yes, it was. Back-to-back. Rowdy Telez, baby, on a 2-1 pitch. Gets, was it a fastball on the outer half? And barrels it up and crushes it to dead center field. And it's gone. Back-to-back jacks for the Jays. Rowdy Telez's first big league home run. And the Jays have cut that lead down to 8-5. They're right back in it again. I mean, still three runs. But, hey, back-to-back home runs gets the mojo going. I think Kevin Pillar actually doubled uh, on the, as the next batter. But then Jansen got out to end the inning, which sucked. But, hey, you got two runs back on the board. But, as we all say, you got to put up a zero in the next inning. And they do not. On a wild pitch, guys, Jose Ramirez... uh, No, excuse me. Yeah, Jose Ramirez comes in to score. 
And one of those two runs we just got, yeah, right back to the Indians. It's now an eight five or nine five ball game. Guys, we've talked about it all year long. Being able to put up a zero in the half inning next when you when you score runs in the next half inning, you want a zero. And the Jays have not done that all year, and they continue to show it in this game. But <laughs> funny thing is, they take that nine five lead in the next half inning. Kendry's guys, the Jays get something mojo going in the bottom of the sixth inning. This Jays team just does not quit. You know, I mean, what? Uh, uh, Richard Urania grounds out and Diaz grounds out to end that or to start the inning off. And we're like, ah, oh, two out, nobody on. It's going to th be a three up, three down inning. And that's no problem. Billy McKinney then singles to center field. Then Lourdes Gurriel doubles to right field. McKinney to third, second, and third, two out for K Money. What does he decide to do? Single through the right side. Both runs come in to score. It's a 9-7 game. Next batter, Randall Gritch. A key singles to center field. Morales to third. Tying runs on first base. They bring in uh, Tyler Olsen to face Rowdy Telez. And he walks him. Now the bases are loaded. And they bring in Neil Ramirez. And Pilar flies out to end the inning. That one hurts. Look. Tying runners in runner in scoring position. We talk about that big inning where you have the opportunity to break it open and to get that bit, you get the lead back even, depending on what you do. But instead, the Jays get nothing from the Kevin Pilar flyout, and that ends the inning. They're still trailing by two nine seven, and that's what the Cleveland Indians did not do in that big fifth inning. You know they had two out and the bases loaded, but Roberto Perez had a bases clearing double the center field. That's what happened. You know, and let's move to the, uh, was it the bottom of the seventh? It was the bottom of the seventh inning, and Danny Jansen leads off the inning with a double. Urania grounds out, Jansen to third. Diaz then doubles to left field. Jansen comes in to score. It's a 9-8 game, and we got a runner at second, another runner in scoring position. The tying run, you know, with, uh, what was it, only one away. Devin Travis comes in to pinch hit. And grounds out, and then they intentionally walk Gurriel, and Morales flies out. The tying run stays in scoring position, and the Jays are still trailing by one. And that's all she wrote as the Jays lose 9-8 to the Cleveland Indians. That was a long breakdown because there was a lot of craziness going on in this game. A lot of big lead changes, then all oh, teams are coming back. It was a lot of crazy stuff. But on bottom line, it was not a great start for Sean Reed Foley. Four and two-thirds, five hits, six runs, three strikeouts, five walks. That's a huge problem. He can't be doing that. You're giving free passes. You're not going to win many games, especially against a great offense like the Cleveland Indians. We talked about Justin Schaefer. He wasn't good. Mark Letter Jr. came in, gave up a hit, uh, walked a couple, gave up a run, wasn't earned, but still gave up one run. Tim Mesa came out and con continues to pitch well. He gave up a couple hits, but a clean inning and a strikeout. Tyler Clippard came out in the, uh, I think it was the seventh inning. and No, excuse me, it was the eighth inning. And uh, gave up two hits, but struck out the side. Clean inning, it worked for him. And then Taylor Guerrero comes out for a clean inning. No hits, no walks, and a strikeout. In his uh, in his ninth inning, I guess, he is, is where he pitched. But guys, the on-base streak for uh, Billy McKinney continues. He is he was two for four with a run scored today. Uh, Lourdes Gurriel was two for five with a run scored. Morales was one for five with a couple RBIs, obviously with the RBI single he had. Randall Gritchick stays red hot, guys. He was 3-for-5 today with a couple home runs. And uh, he was great. Rowdy Telez stays red hot since he's come up from Buffalo, for goodness sakes. He went 2-for-4 with the home run in the RBI in this ball game, And also walked once as well for good measures. Kevin Pillar, 2-for-5. Jansen, 1-for-4. Urania, 1-for-5. And right at the bottom of the lineup, Alenmus Diaz, 4-for-5 with a couple RBIs. Raising his average to 260. He has had one heck of a season. Now, the Jays look to... Split the four game set against the Indians tomorrow afternoon. Not going to be an easy one. That video, guys, will be uploaded late. Like, I I, I, maybe about this time. I'm hoping earlier. Uh, but I'm not going to. I don't know exactly for sure. But I'll say around this time just so you guys can kind of get a gist of it. If it's earlier, great. It won't be later, though. All right. Mike Clevenger, Thomas Pannone, the pitching matchup in the finale at 107 at Rogers Center. All right. So, you know what, guys? That is going to do it for this one. You guys enjoyed this video. And you guys enjoyed the ball game as a whole because it was entertaining, but not the result the Jays wanted. And it's the way it goes. Just not some great pitching, giving them a lot of free passes. Not what you want to see. But let me know what you guys thought of the ball game. Hit the smack, hit the smack that like button if you guys enjoyed it. 
Hit the subscribe button if you guys have not already. Comment down below. What do you guys think of this game? What, what were your thoughts on Sean Reed Foley? He had four great innings and then just kind of really fumbled there near the end. Gave up some big runs, uh, you know, on key walks. You can't be doing that kind of stuff. What do you think of his outing? What have you thought of McKinney, Telez, Gritchick, all these young guys? You could call Gritchick a young guy at 27. Lourdes Gurriel. Give me everybody, guys. What, what are your thoughts on Diaz uh, from this whole season? There have been times where he's committed some tough errors. Yeah, but guys, he has done a lot more good than he has bad for this team this year. So I want to hear what you guys have to say about that. And uh, Evan and I will talk to you guys Wednesday afternoon podcast edition. Link is in the description for the podcast channel and for the podcast itself on iTunes, guys. Twitter is down below as well. Follow up, send me a DM, do all that great stuff. And I will talk to you guys, what, uh, tomorrow night as the Blue Jays look to, like I said, split this series against the Cleveland Indians. Mike Clevenger, an amazing pitcher for the Indians, on the mound uh, for the finale against Thomas Pannone, the lefty for the Blue Jays. 107 first pitch at Rogers Center. We'll talk to you guys then.